Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. G'day, mate. Just us two again today. Just Good. us as well. Steve, we are talking about the most effective weight loss diets of all time. I know. You're going to have these diets and look like us. Well, yes. <laughs> well, hopefully, maybe a little bit better. <laughs> no, um, can't but be. Steve, being there and use some of these diets, yep. we're going to be talking about what works, yep. what doesn't. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly, the yep. crazy, strange diets Love in the em. 70s and 80s. Love them. Even some of the weird things that people do today to try and lose weight. Yeah. And, you know, you can lose weight the healthy way yep. or you can lose weight an unhealthy way. And we want to talk about the benefits and the pros and cons mm. and get into it. So, Steve, this yeah. is a huge topic. It's something that we've been speaking about for a while. It's, and we just want to create some clarity for people, um, yeah. you know, around these diets. So, mate, where do you want to start? Because well, we want to go from – and eventually – yeah. What I'd like to do is create a five, four, three, two, one, yeah, and then maybe the ultimate diet. Now, yeah. it could be a collaboration, and when we say the ultimate diet, it's the ultimate diet for you. Yep. Now, this may not suit your hardcore fitness individuals mm -hmm. who have got coaches who mm -hmm. are getting up on stage. Guys, you know, you know what you're doing. You know yep. what you're eating. However, you might find some of this information interesting in relation to long-term effects of some of these diets like yeah. rebound weight gain yep. uh they talk about reverse dieting mm -hmm. i mean there's all sorts of things that happens in your body when you diet mm -hmm. and sometimes you can do a sprint or you can get a fantastic result in a very short period of time mm -hmm. but it's what happens after that yeah. the, the the change in the gut microbiome uh the change in your hormones uh you know crashing your metabolism there's so much to take into consideration steve but for the lay person listening to this, you know, maybe you're thinking, well, will I do keto? Will I do Weight Watchers? Mm -hmm. Will I do a very low calorie diet or VLCD? Yep. Uh, you know, there's all, will I do Pritkin's diet? <laughs> I mean, both of the young people are here. What the heck is Pritkin's diet, right? Pritkin, Nathan Pritkin, Pritkin, Pritkin yeah, Pritkin diet. But I, I think there's a whole heap of. Um, it's funny because I'm remembering that from the '80s. My mum went on it. Uh, what about really? the juice diet, Steve? I oh, yeah, love the juice diet. Um, what about um, what about the the carnivore diet or the, the what about vegetarianism? I mean, there's so many different ways we can go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is, and I guess I'll say, we'll, we're going to rank them uh, from 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 best to uh, from worst to best. Yeah. Uh, and what I mean by worst is maybe good to great. Yeah. Um, but because there's a few ones that we're going to mention that are kind of a bit wild and woolly and a bit yeah. crazy, and you yeah. probably shake your head thinking, oh, my gosh, how could people actually think that that was going to work? Yeah. But ultimately, the best diet, Steve, is the one that works for you. Correct. And the one that you enjoy mm -hmm. and the one that also long-term looks after your health, not yeah. just your waistline. Yep. And, okay. now, and look, we, we get lots of letters about, you know, so what I started with was the, the five criteria that I used, yeah. okay, and sort of ranked them. Okay. So we'll start with that. Okay. Here's the criteria. The first criteria was weight or fat loss. So, so this is what... This this is the criteria that we're using to rank the yeah. weight loss diet or system yep. against. Okay. So yep. number one is weight loss. Weight loss. Okay. Now, specifically, and again, for our fine feathered fitness friends, because yes. it, uh, it used to be a trigger word for me. It'd be like, right? See, I like, get angry. It'd be like weight loss. Well, yeah. hang on a minute. What about muscle? Yeah. What about water? What we're really talking about, I guess, mm. is the loss of body fat. Correct. That's why I wrote weight slash fat loss. Oh, okay. I and couldn't see that. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, the, the second criteria, and everyone can argue about this criteria, was was simplicity. Okay. Okay. So, you know, you've got to get the message across, you know, as a practitioner, you get the message across to someone and say, I want you to do A, B, C. If you say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, L, 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 L. So simplicity of the diet. Right. And there's some that kick ass in simplicity uh, that may not kick ass in the weight loss or, you know what I mean? So really interesting. The third one was compliance. How long are you going to stick to this? Yep. And, and I'm talking about the average person. You, you talk about the body, you know, the people you mentioned before, mm -hmm. they'll stick to anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, they're, they're machines. And then there's, 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 there's a fourth factor, which I called the other, mm -hmm. which is a bit weird because, you know, there's some people say, oh, but I'm vegan. But, you know, I've got a religion or I've got these special tastes or I don't like this or that. You know, so there's these other category, which is a bit gray. Yep. And the fifth one I threw in at the end was cost. Okay. 
because you know what? You know, if we, you talk about the car, carnivore diet, yeah, rib fillet steak, three meals a day, or such, it would become expensive. Well, this is where spam comes in, Steve. Absolutely, I think spam, I didn't, well, I think it's spam. spam is a is a form of meat. Yeah, you know, it's not something email related. We think it's no. actually not been scientifically proven that it is actually meat, <laughs> what but is spiced spam? ham. It's just weird, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you, I don't know, and if you cut it this way, you get three quarter. No, I'm just kidding. There's it, an ad back in the '80s that talked oh. about that. It's it's funny because uh, you know Tony and I, I I joke to her all the time about it. Like if you have to start again, you might have to start eating spam. Yep. And, and look, with the way that inflation is going at the moment, we might all be eating spam if we can oh, actually get a hold of spam. So, absolutely. Mm. I mean, it's it's and 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 this is where we've got to be careful about because spam. And I don't know how much carbohydrates in spam, but if you're on a low carb diet, this could be a a meat of choice for you. You know what I mean? So good. I'm, I'm going to also put in there a category of overall general health that encompasses okay. those five criteria. Yeah. So so if it's going to kill you the diet, it's probably not going to make the top five. All right. So, Steve, do we want to talk at some honourable mentions and some yep. weird and woolly ones first, or do you want to go straight to number five? Well, we can do either. I've got I've got them listed here that I've covered up. So, okay. Okay. Um, so um, the honourable mention ones where didn't make the top five, okay. but, but I, I and I'm not a fan, but I'm going to mention them. Yep. It's the meal replacement diets. Okay. I have to give it kudos because. It's simple. It is. They work. Yes. It's pretty easy to be compliant. Yeah. And and I think that's, and again, this is where for the people who are really busy, yeah. I'm talking about the executives mm. and the, the people that have a limited time frame yeah. who don't have a lot of bandwidth. And again, I've said this before in other podcasts. So if mm. you look at people like Steve Jobs, they wore the same outfit all the time because the less, you know, obviously they're busy, mm. their, their focal point is on creative and on running companies, mm. you know, and you might not be running a company, but you might be busy with family and all the rest of it. And and your priorities are focused on things that are replicatable, yep. that don't require a lot of brain power. Mm-hmm. I mean, wearing the same, this is where uniforms at schools is fantastic mm-hmm. because effectively it's just like same same, same shirt, same pants, same, same you know, every, mm-hmm. every time. And, and this is, if you look at Steve Jobs, always wore that black turtleneck, black turtleneck right? Yeah. You know, and, and there are other, other guys as well too and, and girls that did exactly the same thing. They had almost the same thing that they wore every single time mm-hmm. because they didn't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, the funny thing is I do that here as well too. Like I just wear a black ATP shirt. I need get changed up today is wow. the weird day for us isn't it it's well, like it's it is but but black atp shirt pair of black yeah. jeans and, yeah. and and that's it that's yep. that's what I, that's the uniform i don't have to think about mm-hmm. it i just throw them in the wash mm-hmm. we've got five pairs of both boom that's it <laughs> exactly and and so so uh, this is a great way uh, with this diet to mm-hmm. create structure yeah and you know what you're going to eat yep. you know when you're going to do it you get into a routine because mm-hmm. i think if anything is important steve with anything about a diet it's about mm-hmm. following it yeah. and the easier and the lower the the barrier to entry with routine the better yeah and you just pick the worst meal of the individual it might be oh, every night i just have macas or takeaway so okay instead of that you have your shake you're right or whatever it is and you can add things into the shake you yeah. can you can blend up some berries and make it semi healthy sure. you know um but it's simple or yeah. l- let's go the you know the, the worst case scenario just just have a shake yeah that's just got one ingredient yep. that's and water yeah and it will fill you up sure then you go to bed yeah and it's like yeah you might get a bit hungry later on the night but then you go to sleep well there are some out there i'm not going to mention the brands but yeah. i mean and again i'm not i'm not totally opposed to them steve but right. obviously Typically, most of the meal replacement diets out there normally are quite high in sugar. Yep. Uh, they normally throw in a lot of relatively cheap protein that are high in like milk fat solids mm-hmm. and, and milk solids, um, you know, uh, casein, uh, skim milk powder. Yeah. Yeah. So they taste good on water. Yeah. And look, I think that's part of the attraction. Yeah. Uh, but then they use a lot of really cheap a pixie dust sprinkling of vitamins as well mm. too. So people kind of look at it, and I guess if you're not educated, you go, "Oh, I'm getting protein. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of carbohydrates there because that's a determination that you need if you have a meal replacement. Mm-hmm. It must have carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the carbs, the sugars are normally pretty high. Yep. The fats, the saturated fats, are also kind of high. Yeah. Not that I'm terribly worried about that, but. And then from, coming from milk solid, Steve, yeah. uh, and skim milk powder, and and then you've got like this smattering of of synthetic, synthetic vitamins. vitamins. And I'm not yeah. necessarily against using them, but when they're just the poor forms and they're not right amounts, they're not activated. They're not. There's no real intelligence behind it. They're just kind of on the label. You're kind of getting a really substandard meal, really. Absolutely, and 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 it's a pol- and that's why I didn't make top five. It's simply because it's it's convenient, it'll work, and and it's got some positives, but it's got those really negatives. Also, they if they if it's low in sugar, they'll usually sweeten it with sucralose. Yeah, which is as we talked about. 
Well, we're going to do that podcast on all of the different sweeteners oh, yeah. revisited, right? Because yeah. I think people are really interested now in terms of we're understanding more now about uh, artificial sweeteners yep. on the gut, mm. the good sugar alcohols, yep. which really, Steve, I think there's only one that we recommend, yeah. and all, and the majority of them, the sorbitols, the maltitols, are actually really bad for the gut. Yeah. Uh, and the good one, you'll have to listen to the podcast yep. to find out what the good we one is. I won't give it away. Um, but, yeah. but, but it's amazing, because those artificial sweeteners, you know, you know they're bad for your gut if you have three or four of these lollies with maltitol in it. Yeah. It will have some effect. Oh, yeah. uh, if you haven't, there's an experiment for you. If you're really keen, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. Dutch it's, oven. Just trust us yeah. on that one. Yeah. Um, so that, that's an honorable mention, okay. though. We, yeah, we cool. have to, it's so you can do it. I mean, if you were going to do it and you are going to try and make it healthy, yeah. incorporate f- like foods like fruits, celery, yeah. and, and diversify the foods that you get with it. So, so you know, Body for Life did it quite well, Steve. Did, yeah. they, they had a combination of th- you have breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner. They mm-hmm. even have a sort of recommendations of what sort of food. And then mid-morning, mid-afternoon, replace it with a protein shake, which I yeah. didn't mind. Mm. So get the total protein up uh, you were eating, which was increasing the metabolism because mm. most people under-eat. Yep. Uh, and then it would normally recommend having like an apple. Like apples got fiber. Mm. You know, you got pectin. You got soluble, insoluble fiber. Yeah. Um, you know, you got some carbohydrates in there. You got all the nutrients, you know, from the you know vitamins and things like that, copper, yeah. you know, in your apple. Mm. Uh, so that's not a bad idea. No. Um, and and if, you, if you changed up the fruits and all the food that you had with it, that's it's not terrible, yeah. but a straight replacement of a meal That's what with I'm a shake, especially if you're mm. doing it three times a day or two times yeah. a day. Mastication, Steve, is very important. You've now, I know that you're a, you have to, which means it's not what you think it means, some people, uh, dirty gutter snipes. Um, it means chewing yes. and eating because it helps with digestion. Now, if you're just drinking, Steve, you're not getting the saliva, which is very important for the breakdown mm. uh, you know, of, of foods and nutrients in your gut. This is why you know, if you're really hungry and you start salivating when you smell foods, mm. that's preparing you know, the, the, the juices, yes. <laughs> if you like, Sounding Steve, worse, yeah. to help with... Um, it's going to be a rating here. Yeah, no, there's going no, into there's no Steve, not, not no, your, okay. no, uh, but it helps with digestion. Yep. And when you're drinking, you're not getting that. Okay, so all right, that's honourable mention. All right, next one, Steve. Yeah, all right, well, I'm going to go to number five. And, and, all right. and weirdly, weirdly, and the reason why I picked this as five is this is sort of the diet that I eat now. Wow. Yeah. So your, your diet now was five? Yeah, it was not on one. Okay. Because remember, the criteria, the first one's weight loss or fat loss. Yeah. And I'm not into weight loss, fat loss. Now, now if you are, yeah. this is what I've assumed you are. So this is why I've put this diet number five. It's oh, okay. Well, it could be maintenance. And look, a lot of people to this yep. may just be interested in maintenance, Steve. Yeah. I mean, the fifth one I've picked, and this is based on a lot of the data, is uh, the Paleolithic diet. Ah. Yeah. Because you're a paleo man. I am. Yeah. Because simply the... the, the, the is Becky Cave woman? She is. Ah. So the paleo diet. The paleo diet is, is, is a diet where you, you eliminate dairy yep. and grain. Keep, keep it real simple. You eliminate dairy and grains right. because yep. the hunter and gatherer of, of yesteryear didn't hunt down and kill a bowl of wheat or right. run around and suck on a cow's udder. Mm. You know, that's utterly ridiculous. It's, oh, it's, that's ah. so bad. Eh? That's so bad. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but no, that's true. Yeah. And, and so I guess what they're trying to suggest is my understanding of paleo, and I'm not really a paleo person per se, but I do like aspects of their diet. But um, nature knows best. They're trying yeah. to really get back to what we used to eat before – you know, civil. You know, before we became over commercialized, um, and I'm a huge fan of that. Like, I think that modern farming farming practices have gone too far. Yes. They've oversimplified our food. We've, we've, we've. You know, in, in modern storage, modern baking, all the rest of it, genetically modified foods. I, th- I think we've, we've, we're missing out on some of the nutrients that we should be eating, and eating a lot of the foods that our body's not really geared for. And I guess paleo is taking that to the nth degree. It is, and it does take the nth degree. Now, the thing with the thing thing that I do with the paleo is. You know, you, you, they're, they're, you always have this as a basis, but their their rules can be broken. You know, you, you you as long as you don't make it like like for example, the the opposite to a paleo would be the Western the standard Australian diet, where you'd have a cereal and milk the, for the breakfast. Sad diet. The sad diet. Yep. Cereal and milk for breakfast. Yep. And the cereal can be a I'll call it healthy, but it may not be healthy, but yep. a a whole grain cereal mm-hmm. with cow's milk on mm-hmm. it. And then you'll have a sandwich, cheese sandwich for lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you might have pasta, noodles, rice for dinner yeah. with your, your meat and veg. Yeah, yeah. And, and the only that's, thing that's good is meat and veg for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, can see, you can see what that. And, and, and I'm not calling that junk food. No. I've, we've t- so, so, so that can be eaten. Like, like that's a pretty common, you know, when I, as an Australian growing up, it, it, cereal and milk was what everyone had. Oh, yeah. Uh, cheese sandwich, 
Mate. Again, yeah. margarine on it. You know what I mean? And oh, that's yeah. that's anti. This is really anti paleo. Which, and again, the basis of it, I totally agree, and I, yeah. and I totally get um, nuts and seeds are things that I think you can eat on paleo, yeah, which we probably don't eat enough of, to be honest, Steve. Yeah, um, yeah obviously, you know, good cuts of meat. Yep. Um, you're having, you know, you you plenty of vegetables. Do you have potato? Uh, potato, you can have sweet potatoes. Yeah, not potato, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 and that's again that that's that grey area. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's charisma potatoes which are low in carbohydrates, which is okay to eat. Oh. But yeah, but 25. They got more resistant starch in them. But right. But but typically potatoes are a no-no. So so it's basically eating more salads, more meats, more fish, more eggs, more veggies, less more processed foods. V- virtually no processed foods. Um, so that, that, that's not a bad foundation. And look, I think in terms of if mm. you're if you're you have a look at it. I mean, yeah. as I said, I'm not opposed to the paleo no. diet. Um, I, I think it's 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 pretty healthy pretty for healthy. the most part. It's pretty healthy. It just sort of and this is I'll quote a study now. I've got a heap of them here. Whew. And they compare it with a lot of the other diets. Um, and um, actually, this is going to be a great segue. Um, they, there was this study published 2017 where they compared it uh, against the Atkins, uh, the DASH diet, which is a, an antihypertensive one, a glycemic index diet, Mediterranean diet, Ornish diet, Paleolithic diet, and Zone diet. And well, there's a at, lot of diets there that we need to mention, Steve. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and they looked at them all for weight loss. Yeah. And, and that, that's always the outcome. Okay. And who came out on top of, out of those the, those there, ones? There was only one. Oh. There can be only one. That's from the movie, Steve. Come on, you got to yeah, drop Highlander. it. Highlander. Highlander. Yeah, a lot I, of people wouldn't know what that one is. No, it's too the old. The original was Sean Connery in there. Yes. Who was the lead actor? Uh, it was uh, Lambert. Lambert. It was. Some, uh, Christopher Lambert. Christopher Lambert. Christopher not Adam Lambert. Lambert, not the singer. No, not Adam Lambert. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Legends here. Man, we're talking back in the 80s. They, they were great films, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Now, I'm going to read you. This is a pretty powerful statement. This is from this med- – it's a, it's a systemic review clin- from clinical trials. Mm-hmm. And it says, of all the diets evaluated, the Atkins diet showed the most effective in producing clinical meaningful short-term and long-term greater than one-year weight loss. So that is – so the Atkins – okay, so you're yeah. segueing here. So we're we going to talk about – are we going to talk about Atkins now or do you want to finish off on paleo? Well, we can finish off on paleo because the Atkins is, is, is a little bit similar, but there's a, there's a few differences. But the paleo diet – I like because it's a good, healthy one mm. because it gives you that basis. And, and you can say to somebody across the table, you can say, okay, Joe Sixpack, I just want you to cut out on flour, your grains, dairy, or and fine sugar. sugars. Yep. So you're allowed sugar in the form of fruits, like whole fruits yep. and like dates and things yep. like that because I appreciate that sort of part of, the, I guess, the staple. It is. Um, which isn't bad because no. typically with those things, you're getting lots of fiber, which is mm. obviously releasing it. So the refined sugars that yeah. I think are a big problem, Steve. And, and I think out of all of these diets, it'll be interesting to see, most of them, I would imagine, would limit or reduce completely sugars, not yeah. fat. And let's yeah. just see. So, Well, there's one that has sugars in it. Okay, that, that well, allows sugars. Well, let's go to the... Didn't make top five. Okay, well, there you go. It's crap. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. But I think... Okay, well, let's go to Atkins diet. Yes. Now, how is Atkins different from keto? All right. Well, the Atkins diet is, is different to keto because ketos often restrict calories. Right. The Atkins diet... Robert Atkins, if we can, you know, he's, he's, he's a cardiologist from well, and, yesteryear. Well, and, and Steve, there's some controversy here. Yeah, there because, is lots of it. Because uh, he died of a heart attack. Well, so they say, but he actually uh-huh. fell on ice now, and died of this, a stroke. Well, this is what, okay. Mm. He was hated mm. by a lot of people. He went completely against, and again, we've done podcasts on the Sugar Board, which yep. is Sugar Lobby, which is a powerful yep. entity. Yep. Very powerful, especially back yesteryear, mm. right? I don't know if they still are. Oh, I'd say so. There's they're lots gonna, of sugar consumed. They're going to come Ooh. through the walls, through the... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, the Atkins diet, very controversial. Yeah. This was, I mean, again, for those that know the Atkins or think that they know Atkins, eat bacon, yep. cheese, yep. and butter, yep. and the, the majority of your diet should be made from fat, Yep. Some protein yep. and virtually no carbohydrates. Less than 20 grams, yeah. Uh, in, there's four phases of the Atkins diet. Right. So it's a, it's a, it, this is where it, – it, look, the studies show that it works for long-term weight loss, which is the big tick, the, the number one criteria. So, again, I'm using these criteria, mm-hmm. and we can, we can pick on the Atkins diet, but it's well, no, very, no. very tested. I'm not – really picking on it. I'm mm. sort of putting forward I think probably the consensus of what maybe a lot of people have heard. Yeah. That it's it's dangerous. Yep. It's gonna put your cholesterol through the roof, mm. uh, that it's gonna harden your arteries, uh, that it's not healthy for you, mm. that you're not getting enough um 
uh, fiber in your diet, yep. that you're not getting enough um, fruit and vegetables and just mm-hmm. specifically fruit yep. into your diet. Yep. Yep. That though, and, and that the guy who invented it died of a heart attack because of his diet. There's some truth and there's some mistruths in there. So do, do is, you want to yeah. put the record straight? In, in New York, it, it was it was cold and he, he slipped on ice and hit his head and Ooh. never regained consciousness. And two really? weeks later, yeah, he was put in put into a coma. Uh huh. And uh, you know, this is you can Google this is fact. This. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and so so he technically died of a brain bleed, which is otherwise known as a stroke. Ah, okay. Now, stroke comes under the cardiovascular. Um, umbrella, yeah, because it's vascular, right? You damage your blood vessels. So they say he died of cardio, car, uh, vas- cardiovascular disease. Did they? Well, yeah, because is that it what is? they said. Because but, I mean, again, I've always heard, oh no, that dude died of a heart attack. Yeah, no, because well, that's when. Because when you think of cardiovascular disease, you go yeah. heart and arteries or heart attack. Yeah, right. That's what I think. But in the cardiovascular ward of the hospital, you'll see stroke victims because oh, it's a bleed. Oh yeah, yeah, in yeah. the brain or a clot in the brain. So do you think that it was purposefully reported like that? Oh, absolutely. Well, it's it's factual. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, you know, those fact checkers where they say yeah. it's mostly true. Mostly true. Yeah. So, but, but no, he, he died of a, a vascular illness because he, he fell over on ice, smacked his head, right. never gained consciousness. Yeah. He was pumped full of corticosteroids because the brain swells. Yeah. So you put on all this fluid and weight. So he was overweight when he died because he hadn't died technically until they turned the machines off oh. a couple of weeks later. No, so, so he did die of cardiovascular disease. disease but and, was, was and was overweight. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it was caused And this by is trauma. why they say you will tell the the truth, yeah. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's right. It's like, well, we'll tell you the truth, yeah. uh, but we won't tell you all of it. But but how one person died is not relative. What 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 I like to look at is all the studies on the Atkins diet. Yeah, you you correctly mentioned it increases cholesterol. Mm-hmm. It increases HDL cholesterol because the higher saturated high density. Fats. Yep. Yeah. Then the high density lipoprotein is the safer one. It's actually been used as an intervention to treat cardiovascular disease. Wow. It dramatically reduces triglycerides. Wow. And if you reduce triglycerides, you reduce the dangers of the LDL, the bad cholesterol. Yeah. So it's actually quite good for your heart. And this is counterintuitive. After yeah. obviously we did an episode. So on cholesterol and on the medical paternity, mm. and they freaked out. I think when one of the uh, yeah. presidents of the United States, and they sort of said it's a national emergency. Yep, yep. And what we, we determined on the podcast as well too is that they the smoking gun was pointed at fat yep. and saturated fat. When what should have actually happened is we should have been pointing the finger at refined sugars. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you know the Atkins diet has actually a lot of safety involved with it with regards to cardiovascular disease. It's a good one for the treatment of cardiovascular disease. And this was done, this is in MedSource. They, mm. they actually said that it's it's a very good one to use for cardiovascular disease. Nice to use it for cardiovascular disease because so, it, it was a simple one. So how does it differ, again, Steve, I'm not oh, clear, from, from keto. How from does keto. it differ from sure. keto? They don't restrict calories, right. the first thing. They encourage more protein than keto. Right. Because they the, the Atkins diet is this. It's, it's don't limit what you eat. Right. Do not limit your fats or proteins at all. Eat when you're hungry, eat as much as you want, when you want. Yeah. And if you're hungry, eat. Uh, the ketogenic diet is a vastly higher fat diet yeah. and a moderate protein diet. This yes. is technically a high fat, high protein, very low carbohydrate diet. Well, it's funny because I've done keto mm. and I'd say my keto probably morphed a bit more into Atkins. Yeah. Now, what's funny as well too is that I tried to incorporate more and I just, I never used to measure calories or anything. And that's when I got into my best shape, really, was yeah. kind of using a, a Dave Palumbo's keto diet, which then sort of morphed into a bit of an Atkins diet yeah. as maintenance when I got down to my level, because then I just wouldn't worry about counting calories anymore. I'd eat when I'm hungry. I'd make sure I get a certain amount of protein in. Sure. But my protein intake was probably higher. My fat intake was probably a bit lower. Yep. And I tried to focus on lots of nuts, seeds, and things like avocado yeah. and fish and uh, like salmon mm. and other things that had naturally good fats that weren't necessarily from butter or cream or from dairy because we were having the the dairy issues then as well too now don't get me wrong and we're very different steve Mm. because i'm not anti-dairy whereas you're relatively anti-dairy cow's milk especially okay so just quickly just as an aside yeah what dairy would you consider to be okay? Or like a cheese. really refined cheese? What, what about what about a WPI that doesn't have? Oh, that WPI is fine too. Okay, but but you wouldn't definitely you def, you hate casing because I know that you you yeah, don't like a, casing because the brain the brain yep. barrier thing, right? Yep. Um, okay. All right. It just because as I said, yeah. Steve, I will use um, dairy, mm. but I've largely cut it out. Largely, and if I do have it, I use use things like bath milk, um, yeah. and I use microbes. Because again, I always look at it and go, I, I think it's kind of 
yeah, I think it's natural. But the more that we get away from obviously mm. natural, uh, you know, or if the things are left in it that, that yeah, I, that the, I don't the paleo like. diet it says goes back and says it's natural for us to suck on a cow's yeah. udder. Because remember, in the paleo days there wasn't refrigeration, so right they they didn't, you know, very often. Um, the, the cow would kick them in the side of the head if they tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be a dangerous... It would be da- yeah, it's like, hang on, I'm just thing. having a suck on a but, cow's but, That's know, not a cow, it's a bull. Then, then yeah. in the last few thousand years we've yeah. been... And pe- people say, they say, oh, we're at the last few... The Industrial Revolution, that's only a few thousand years. Yeah. You've got to remember, you know, in, in my way of thinking, of course, we've been around three million years, so it's a long way back there. No, <laughs> younger theory, Steve. Yeah, I mean, you and right, I, yeah, you, yeah, you agree to disagree, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, so, okay. so that's, that's a different thing. Yeah. But, but the reason why I put Atkins in there and it's number four is because the dark... It says it works after 12 months. All those other diets I mentioned didn't have any significant long-term weight loss. And the reason for that is because the Atkins, it, it, it's good for the person because it says, oh, do I have to go hungry? Nope, you eat food. How do I count I like my calories? That. Yeah. I, I like that, Steve, yep. because you know what I found myself personally? And again, mm. this is personal experience. So again, we can only yep. talk about what we do personally. Is that when I was hungry, I ate. I was not eating refined sugars. Mm. I was also, and this is interesting, mm. I was using keto sticks to see if I was in ketosis. Yep. And I was always in the purple range. Now, yeah. I appreciate that you can overdo that yep. as well too, and that yeah. can cause problems. And so what I would do is on the weekends, I'd stop that, and I'd eat protein, and I'd have lots of fruit. Yep. So for the entire weekend, I'd be eating like apples mm. and, and, and bananas mm-hmm. and mangoes mm. and strawberries and all the rest of it. But I'd stop eating fat during that time. Mm. Now, did it work? Yeah, it did. I got really lean. Mm. I felt really good. I had lots of energy and I was never really hungry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I mean, th- because it works after 12 months and all those other diets didn't, and that's a review from yep. all the data, yeah. I, I have to give it a tick for that. Yeah. And, and it's, it's because it's, it, you can do it over 12 months because it's a compliance thing. Yeah. I mean, it's like, who wouldn't want to eat eggs and bacon for breakfast? You know, everyone, you know if you think of the average sort of, and I'll stare well, it up a little bit. But let me just talk about that as yeah. well too. The problem I have with bacon mm. Is the nitrates mm, in it, right? Mm. And, and so Tony and I would go and eat bacon, but we'd find nitrate-free nitrate free, yeah. bacon. So, and this is when they say, "Oh, that's all bad for you." So actually, you know, if you're getting like, you know, curds. I mean, like, you know, if you're if you're getting like real cream made without preservatives, yeah. like some things are made bad because of what they've added to it. Yeah. Exactly, and 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 that's that's a great way to do it. Now, now, as far as weight loss is concerned, yes, that is a health issue. Yep. Uh, preservative one fifty, it is if you're looking for it on the packets. Yeah, right. The nitrates, but very, but, very, but, but very th- common. Think think about you know again, we're, we're sitting opposite someone. Say say we're naturopaths, we're sitting opposite someone, and they 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 want they need to go on a diet. They're a middle aged man about my age. They're overweight. And it's like, oh, what can I eat? What, what are you going to restrict from me? You say, well, I want you to eat unlimited meats, unlimited fish, unlimited nuts. Nuts and un- I unlimited love nuts. salads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and can I eat cheese? Yes, you can eat hard cheese. None of that soft stuff. Yep. Don't put on a biscuit. No. But you're going to eat that. Yeah. No, so, so no camembert, yep. no brie, but yep. go for, your, go for your, your cheddar and all yep. the rest of it. And I do not want you to count calories. I want yeah. you to eat when you're hungry yep. and eat until you're full, but yep. not stuff. The other thing that I used to do too, Steve. Yeah is that I love a little bit of wine. Yeah. So when I was on my keto diet, yeah. I was having red wine. Dry red wine, I hope. Yeah. Yep. Guess what happened? What? Didn't throw me out of ketosis. No, it doesn't. Now, I know that preferentially it'll burn that as an energy source, so that you're not always burning, mm. but if there's a diet where you like <laughs> bacon, cheese, yeah, and yeah, red yeah. wine, this diet can actually accommodate that. Now, I'm not saying going out and drinking a bottle of red wine because, of, of course, the calories yep. per mil in alcohol is Absolutely. seven, right, which is higher, and the body will yep. preferentially. And obviously, a little bit of red wine's good for you, I believe, yep. especially if it's preservative-free. A lot, like anything, a lot's yeah. bad. But I found personally mm. that diet really easy to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the side effects might be is that I think my strength was probably a little yeah, would. a little bit weaker. Yep. But man, I'm not a I'm not a power lifter mm. uh, or a crossfitter. Mind you, a lot of crossfitters do paleo. So yeah. um so I found it was probably a little bit down. But oh, mind well, you, it might have just been an adjustment period, Stephen. I might have bounced yeah. back to where I was just as strong before, I don't know. Yeah, well, well paleo can have uh, sweet potatoes and have lots of carbs in that. Yeah, well that's um, right, they can, can't the, they? The Atkins diet was tested only twice um, against low-fat diets and, and blew them away both times. Yeah. You've got to remember that the 20-gram carb thing only goes for two weeks. After that, you introduce more fruits and vegetables. For the first two weeks, you're only allowed um, tomatoes 
and avocados as fruit. Yeah, and avocados are awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, you start adding more and more. So it's only two weeks. It's very strict. Well, I, I just used to measure um, myself. And once the yep. the sticks started to go purple, you yep. know, or, or you know, along that, that yep. I'd be like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm getting into that. Um, and, and I'd also highly recommend using acetyl-L-carnitine as well, too, to actually help with uh, utilizing fat for energy. Absolutely. Um, I, I definitely recommend yep. that. Um, yeah. um, absolutely. And, and then with your coffee, yep. go for your black coffee. And then... Throw cream in it. It's bloody yep. awesome. It's really nice. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've got five, uh, four studies here that show, and, and I'll quit it, numerous studies have shown low-carb diets like the Atkins diet may reduce many risk factors, including blood triglycerides, cholesterol, blood sugar, insulin, and blood pressure. Well, it was insulin that I was most interested in. Yeah. Because when you're following this kind of diet, the Atkins yeah. slash keto diet, yep. insulin effectively goes out the window. And my yep. feeling, Steve, and you might have numbers on this, that, that insulin... Um, and we spoke, we've spoken a little bit over the last few diets, is probably the number one problem with most diets today as far as um, obesity and, mm. and other health-related issues. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going I'm to show you how to get around that okay. if, you, if you're going to have carbs, but you have to eat less calories. So there's, 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 there's two sort of groups of diets that I found. One was low-calorie diets, yep. and one were the ones that didn't count calories. Yep. And, and the lower-calories diet, you will lose weight. Okay? It's harder, though. It's much harder. And you're thinking about food all the time. Yeah, and you can And you can be a bit miserable. And they have tested, and, and, and actually, actually the Atkins diet, what they find is that people tend to reduce their calories themselves. Naturally, because I think... Two reasons. Okay, well, can I give my, yeah, my thoughts? Yeah, go for it. Because the, the, the fat that you're consuming helps with satiety. Yep. So, the, the, in other words, the gastric emptying time yep. is, 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 incre is, is increased, Absolutely. which means that you, you, with refined sugars, they're in and out yep. immediately. And that's creating um, blood glucose issues. That's yep. creating uneven blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So I think the gastric emptying time and the blood sugar yep. has to be the reason. Correct. Is that both reasons? That's or just one, one of them. Okay, we'll the other one, one is, is the ketones actually have an appetite regulating effect on ah. the brain. And the other one, the psychological one, if you want to put this one, is that if, if you're told not to have something... Yeah, yeah. You're you, thinking about you're it. You're thinking about it. Yep. Don't and, think about a ninja yep. with red eyes, Steve. Yep. No, yeah, exactly, thinking, exactly. Now I'm thinking about a ninja with red eyes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if you, and you said it before. Yeah. Okay, I don't want you to think about what you can't have. Yeah. I want you to think about nuts and yeah. and meats and yes. a bit of red wine if you're feeling like Eggs it on a, on a Friday. Yeah. And yeah, let's go make some omelets with bacon mm. and, and ham and, you know, a nice avocado guacamole style dip with, you yeah. know, something else, right? Like you know, avocado cheese and lettuce lovely. and everything. Um, it's great. Lunch. And yeah, you're going to be full yeah. and you're going to feel good. Um, and it just make sure you're getting plenty of your salad in yeah. there as well too. And I think that's great. And then as I say as well too, what I would do is after mm. I've been on it and what I did do, Mm. And again, I sort of keto slash, and I did that for, for the keto, the, the Dave Palumbo keto diet, which is great and really yeah. worked well. It sort of transgressed into me, transgressed, it's transgression, that's just, it, 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 it transferred into more of an Atkins style diet, yeah. where again, I put more focus on nuts and avocado yeah. and fish, mm. as opposed to straight out bacon and high saturated yeah. foods. And I'm not saying that necessarily I was being better, but it just sort of fit with my mindset. Yeah, it's true. And and so that that's why the, this guy's, you know, coming number four, this diet. It's right. because it really works. It's probably one of the most studied diets. Mm -hmm. Because Is it still popular, Steve? Because I don't really hear that many people talking about the I Atkins saw, diet. I saw Rob Lowe on television selling, flogging off the Atkins drinks and bars. Really? Yeah. You know, Rob Lowe. I, yeah, we're friends. Yeah, he's... It's like me, good yeah, looking. Young blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he's probably older than me now. I, don't know how old he's. I think but he is older than you, Steve. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, probably, he's, nearly, he's nearly 60 now. But he looks better than me. He's a bloody good looking guy. He looks better than but most everyone, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's still there. Mm -hmm. but, but the science is what I love about it because it's really well tested. Um, and, and I remember the early days in the 80s when they, these guys came out to show that it was terrible for your heart and they accidentally proved it was good for your heart. Oh, great. Nothing to see here. Because you got to remember, in the 80s, the fat thing was really bad. Well, Steve, and this is what really is crazy in the legacy of these mm. low-fat foods from the 80s. Now, I think that's pretty much well being, ooh, do I say it, debunked? Yeah. You know, yeah. but, I mean, oh, people throw that word around way too much. But I think the low-fat ice creams and the low-fat mm. this and the low-fat that, because I always used to go, well, jelly beans are low-fat. It's like zero fat, almost. but yeah, but yeah, you're not going to get skinny eating them, are you? Nah. I mean, so, so so this is the kind of thing where you go. I think most people now have mm. probably identified that low fat, 
It's full of crap. Well, it is, and 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 didn't make any of the top fives. Surprise, surprise, surprise. But surprise. there are two proponents, and one of them's still around. Oh. Dean Ornish. The have Ornish diet. I have heard. Is it is it the Ornish or the Cornish? Ornish. Ornish. Oh yeah. No, nah, I've heard of it, but I don't yeah. really know what it is. It's a very low fat diet, less than ten percent, like the Nathan Pritikin diet. Um, the Pritikin. Yeah, I used to call. It, yeah, yeah. My mum, I think, went on to the Pritikin diet in the eighties. I remember, mm. and she was, you know. Well, Nathan Pritikin was was it was you got to remember this was the height of the low fat mm, revolution, mm. and he was going gangbusters. You eat fat, you get fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, let, let, let's let's just take it back to the seventies, even the fifties. You look at somebody and you suck this thing that's hanging around their waist, and it turns out to be fat. Yeah. And you go, where'd that come from? It must be the fat that went in here. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't know that there's there's the glucose turning into fats in the triglycerides in the liver. You know, all that crap. They they didn't know too much about that. So yeah. They just look fat there, fat in your arteries. Must be the fat you're eating. Yeah. And that was simple. Yeah. And fat high in calories, nine calories per gram. Yep. Carbohydrates four. Well, it's pretty simple. You isn't can it? eat twice as much carbohydrates. Twice as much. Yeah. They didn't know about biochemistry. Insulin was a thing that you know they weren't too familiar with all that yeah. so it's really interesting but but nathan pritikin was i think he unfortunately passed away in his 50s from oh uh, cancers yeah i mean he and then he, it, because he became very depressed because you have a very low fat diet i think at the end and you can fact check this one he may have suicided oh. before he died of cancer yeah really oh it's a terrible diet to go and imagine going on a low fat diet like that <sighs> Very bad, depressing, and well, I mean, your hormones. Are, uh, I mean, yeah. like if you don't get enough fat, you I mean you you you. I mean, vitamin D, vitamin E. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fat soluble vitamins, right? right? Yeah. Uh, I remember, I think when they changed the RDI for vitamin E, they and they said, oh, you got to reduce your fat down from this to this. They just yeah. went from 15, uh, you know, IU to to seven and a half IU or something like yes. that. I can't remember exactly what yeah, it was. Right, it's 15. Oh. 15 was the RDA. And, and I, I, my, I, I and remember the most stupid things, and I haven't read that for 20 years. But but what I was going to say though is that I remember the pro, the, the, the the concept was, well, just now vitamin E. Well, that's halved. Well, yep. Why? Yeah. Because we've half the amount of fat that you should have. Mm. Right. Did nobody, did none of the doctors and that just, I mean, surely they must have been pushing back going, hang on a minute. Mm. We know that we need this amount of fat to yeah. to be healthy on average for yeah. the RDI, RDA, whatever you want to say, whether Australia or, or the US. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you've got to remember, your brain's about 80% fat. Hormones. Mm. So testosterone. I mean, like, you know, all these things that are important, you need to have fat. So if you go reduce fats, I mean, um, the... the, the um, uh, the elasticity in the in the arteries. I yep. mean, again, you say, oh, well, you don't want too much. But I mean, again, if you dry out fat too much, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have other associated problems as well Absolutely. too, Steve. You got you got your cell membranes of every cell yes. in your body is made of fat. Yeah, you know, bilipid, you know, phospho phospholipid bile. So I mean, you know, no, it's just a, a terrible idea. That it's still kicking around, low fat. Really. Diets. Oh, well, he must Dean be Orish is very still, un, un, still uneducated. He published a paper where where he showed regression of heart disease, okay. um, and and it's like oh, and and so they looked at the study and then they realised there was this exercise program and stress reduction program as well as his diet. So there's three variables in the one, and you can't do that. No, as a no. data, which one? What it was? There's a paper from released, and I've got it in here. Which is better for you? And and I'll give you this choice, and yeah. you can answer it at the end of yeah. the podcast. Oh, I'm if, answer if now. you only have one, now now we're going to get letters about this. Now, here. now, this is controversial. Now, now, now. you now. ready for this one? Yeah. Low carb diet. Yeah. Or exercise. You can't do both. Which one's better for your heart? Steve, I think I know. <laughs> do you? I think I do. Well, don't don't tell us, but but I want you to do. But I want you. you know, I don't want to. You know, but but. Oh, I'm not allowed to answer. Well, we'll get get to the end of it. Um. The, the, I'll tell you what. The, the other, the other diet. Um, I'll come here. I'll give it to number three. Okay. I want to tell you at the end. There. All right. Um, oh yeah. The third diet that came up was mentioned before, and it's good for weight loss, but not really great for weight loss. But it's good for the other things associated with it, costs and that sort of things. And it's the Mediterranean diet. Well, I have heard a lot about the Mediterranean mm. diet. And I have heard about the blue zones, which yep. they talk about. Yep. Um, I've heard about the people on the island of Crete and, yep. and other areas Lives as well, hundreds, too. Yep. Like they live into their hundreds. Yep. Um, one of the funny things, I guess, that I found with the Mediterranean diet, specifically on those people, Obviously, the olive oil, yep. the fresh leafy greens, a yep. little bit of um, red wine that they would have consistently as well, too. Yep. Um, not huge amounts. In fact, they were very, very, from what I remember, they were very, no, very small amounts of red wine, but they would have it. Yep. But they would never be 
you know, drunkards, <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you right. like, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's like anything. Um, but they also had a um, a very restricted calorie diet. They did. And because because they didn't have – people think Mediterranean, oh, that must be pasta and stuff. Yes. It wasn't because they're on islands. No. Yes. They're hilly islands. So they didn't have much of that sort of stuff. They had a lot of olives and all these sort of – Fruits that grew on hillsides, yes. but not big plains of wheat, and and, and and it just reminds me a little bit about uh, is it Dr. Linus who was it? who vitamin C dude Linus Pauling yeah um, he believed in having a a restricted calorie diet as yep. part of longevity yep which I definitely think there seems to be some stuff there as well too Steve very much so yeah in fact it's one of the only diets that have been shown in animals to extend their life yeah. Now, you know, we're, we're coming up to chimpanzees, but it certainly extends the life of rats and fruit flies and these sort of things. They're doing tests on chimpanzees. There are I'm closer humans. to a chimpanzee than a fruit fly, Steve. Are you? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Despite what you may have heard. Despite ninety nine point seven genes are the same. Yeah, same as a cloud, though, right? Cloud? <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> just water vapour, that is. Yeah. Um, but, well, well, but how much water are we made up of, Steve? Uh, about 70%. Yeah, well, so I've, got, I've got a lot in common with the cloud. We've got a lot in common yeah. with the cloud, absolutely. Yeah. You've got a lot in common with the chimpanzee. Absolutely. Maybe not so much. <laughs> yes. So, so you know, the, the calorie restriction diets, and then there's a whole group of them there, and I've got some papers on them. Um, um, oh, oh, actually, the next one is, is the effect of a low calorie versus a low carbohydrate diet. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, that's easy. Is it? Yeah. Low calorie versus low carb. What's yeah. better for you? Yeah, which, which one's oh, better for? Oh, look, we, we just kind of um, said that, Steve. Right? Yeah. It, it, low calorie for, diets good for you, and carbohydrates. Are f- the devil invented carbohydrates. But remember, <laughs> we've got low calorie diets versus yeah. low carb, low carbohydrates. Yeah, diets. yeah, low cal any any day of the week. But, uh, again, I think you know less IGF one. Yep. Um, you, you you're not yep. replicating cells. Your yep. body has more time to repair. So when mm. you're eating, mm. the, you, your body's in a state of growth and repair. Everything's. It's funny. It's like bodybuilders back in the day. Yeah. You know, got to slurp down a shake, yep. casein shake just before bed because you've got to make sure you've had yes. amino acids <laughs> into the bloodstream yeah. all the time. All and the time. Anytime you 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 get anything that's catabolic bad it's like no no life is cycles right yep. and and everything our sleep cycles um you know everything moves in cycles i mean yep. woman's cycle i mean cycles are part of life if you try and just have a, a direct curve like that mm. it's n- not natural Steve. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and so yes low calorie diets you need ebb and flow so mm. per, per and this is actually part of something I want to talk to you about, yeah, yeah. With a good, which is intermittent fasting, which we can get onto, because oh, I yeah. think that is huge. And I spoke a little bit about the warrior diet and some mm. other things which take it to an extreme. Yep. Um, but definitely, I think people understand mm. that um, you, you need to have a lower calorie diet, mm. um, quality food, mm. um, satiety. Uh, and reduce the, the, especially the refined carbs, and yeah. I think you're on a winner. Well, well, this study was done in, uh, they compared low calorie versus low carbohydrate in, in obese type two diabetics. So these, these were obese individuals, so they picked the worst ones. So, well, low calorie, low carbohydrate, well, by being low carbohydrate, you're gonna be lower calorie. So it's the, no, no, the, the, the low carbohydrate group actually ate more calories than the low calorie group. Because of this, the stimulation of, um, of um, leptin. Leptin, yeah, yes. it's got to do with leptin. A very interesting results because this this actually surprised me because I thought, oh, if you eat less calories, you will lose more weight, you know? Yeah, no, no, you want to go low carb. Yeah. So, 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 you what, do. so you're looking at me strange because I was saying the wrong thing. I was saying no, you've got to go low carb, you do. not low calorie. Correct, and you're right because this study, and this is published in Nutrition. This is published in Nutrition. It said the results: the low carbohydrate diet and the low um, calorie diet had beneficial effects on all the parameters, the heart disease, they measured all these sort of things. But interestingly, the changes were more significant in the subjects who were on the low carbohydrate diet compared with on the low calorie diet. Mm-hmm. And so basically they showed, and I'll read the conclusion, this study shows the beneficial effects of a ketogenic diet over the conventional low calorie diet in obese diabetic subjects. Uh, the ketogenic diet appre- um, appears to improve glycemic control as well. So. Eating less calories yep. was okay, yeah, yeah. but having low carbohydrates was better, even though they ate more. It comes down to satiety, right? Because like, yep. I remember with VLCD diets, now I know that yep. we're going to get there, well, VLCD. Oh, yeah, very much right, so. Very low calorie diets. Yep. It's like saying ATM machine, ATM machine, yeah. machine, but very low calorie diets or VLCDs, yeah. right? 
This is what a lot of people do for a short period of time because you've got a certain amount of momentum in your metabolism because you're eating, you know, 2,000, 2,500 calories a day, yeah. whatever it may be. What's interesting is that a lot of people eat too fewer calories and so their metabolism actually slows down. Yes. Now, that's a good thing to a point, mm. but if it goes too slow, then effectively you're stalling the engine. And that's exactly what the study happened. And that's where I was saying before, and this yeah. is probably I was saying the wrong thing, mm. is that, no, you want to go... Yeah. low carb mm. and not focus on low calorie Correct. because you will reduce what you'd call empty or n so negative calories is probably wrong terminology no, bad right, yeah. calories yeah. Yeah. from empty calories. from simple sugars empty mm. calories because they actually work against you they actually make you more hungry mm. they actually stuff up your blood sugar levels your leptin levels yep. gr gr ghrelin. ghrelin um you know yeah whereas if you're focusing on fats and fiber yeah. and greens mm. and lean meats and things like that and even not that lean to be honest mm. um but yeah that's good because a lot of critics would criticize and say well if you eat low carbohydrate that's low calorie so they actually not said okay yeah i know and then so they actually took this study and tested them both and found the low carbohydrate diet is better than the low calorie diet yep on all the parameters it makes the sense the low calorie diet still worked it, it helped a little bit sure but the low carbohydrate diet was even though they ate more calories lost more weight well this is if it fits your macros versus Make it fit your macros. Yep. And I know that this is really, really popular, especially for the guys that are listening that are obviously high trainers. And yep. look, to be fair as well, too, they're not normal people, Steve. No, typically, they're not. Typically, Bodybuilders are not. Well, they've got a heck of a lot more muscle mass. Mm. They're a lot more dedicated. They're mm. typically eating more regularly as well, too. And if they are consuming carbohydrates, they're normally doing it around training times when their body is in deficit, looking to replace glycogen content into muscles and into the liver that's yep. already been expunged. So they're smart. I shouldn't say they're smarter, but they they, understand, they certainly understand their body better yeah. and and the timing of food as well too, which is critical. Yeah, and and they're more compliant. So so they don't care about simplicity or compliance or any of these other factors like the ones we talked about or cost typically. No. They are just into results. Yes. And that's great, but the average six pack, Joe six pack out there may not be. Well, it's, like, it's more like Joe non six pack. Oh, that's really. right. Yes, yeah. Of Let's face it. How many yeah. how many regular Joes have a six pack? I oh, know. No, no. Uh, interestingly, you talk about the macronutrient that, that it fits your macro diet. Before there were fourteen oh. popular named of these sort of ones. Yeah. How, hang on. Is that in the top five? Uh, no, it didn't oh, make it because it didn't of, make it because of this study. Oh, okay. Now this is not just a study. It's published in the British Medical Journal, and it was uh, a meta-analysis of randomised controlled trials, which is the highest type of evidence you can get. And it was published in 2020, and it showed uh, moderate certainty. Evidence shows that most macronutrient diets over six months results in modest weight loss and substantial improvements in cardiovascular risk, risk flow, particularly blood pressure. So yeah. good so far. At 12 months, the effects on weight reduction and improvements in cardiovascular risk largely disappear. And but I'm quoting it. Can I ask, though, yeah. what what sample of the population was given? Because if it's given to a broad population, and again, yeah. if you look at a bell curve, yeah. what percentage of the population would you consider to be moderate to serious um, gym goers? Oh, none. They're, these are all overweight people. Well, yeah. And that's what I'm saying is, mm. is that this is where – and this is why we've got the top five, yeah. which is for the general pop. Yeah, you might not fit in that general population. Mm. If, if it fits your macros, works, and then we're able to incorporate things that are going to be good for your longevity in terms yeah. of looking after your gut yeah. and, and, and reducing um, you know, heart disease and things like that, well, great. Use what works, mm. but just maybe modify it to improve your long-term health. Exactly. So, yeah. so this one will get some letters, I'm sure. Yeah. But it just, uh, you I know, can feel I, them coming. I, I, can't, I, I can't misquote. I just read it, the conclusion out word for word. So, you know, you can argue with the British Medical Journal. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this But the work. devil's always in the details. It is. And I'm not defending I, no. any of these diets no. uh, because it, it, use what works. But as I said, I think if it's general population, they probably are not going to suit that kind of diet Correct. as well. And that's what they picked it on. But if you're a bodybuilder, I think this will work good for you. Sure. Yeah, you know, so with modifications. Sure. Yes, and this is where I say, I love. I, I shouldn't say I love if it fits your macros. I, yeah. I definitely respect the concept, but I yeah. would make it fit your macros. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so probably, if, if if I come up with number um number, what are we up to? And up, up up to number two now. What was okay? What, just do a quick recap. Oh for yeah, me. sure. So what was five? Paleo diet. Okay. Number four. It was good, but yep. yeah, Atkins. Yep. Three. Mediterranean diet. Yep. So we're up to number two. Number two. Guess what? One of your faves. My favourites? Yeah. Uh, Weight Watchers? 
<laughs> that didn't make the top no, I'm five. Ju- I'm just surprise, surprise. Uh, in a minute fasting. Ketogenic diet. Oh, keto. Just a classic ketogenic diet. Right. I mean, well, yes, the Atkins and this yeah, kind yeah, of ketogenic. Yeah, yeah. This is the stricto Strict. ketogenic ketogenic yep. diet because yep. this is what they tested on people. Yep. You've got to remember, it's not just like uh, you've got to remember the average population needs some sort of structure to go with. They're mm-hmm, usually mm-hmm. not as educated as you or I in this sort of thing. No. So it's just say follow the ketogenic diet. They'll Google it. Yep. They'll and come the, up with meal plans. Well, the person that helped me a lot. Um, who I met and, and we did a podcast with was Dave Palombo. In fact, yeah. it, it, I'm not even sure what episode that is. If you look back, put type in Dave Palombo, mm. you can you, they all come up. Dave is a master at it. And mm. Dave was also the person that used ketogenic cycling, which yeah. was the introduction of the fruits and things like that, which I liked because mm. from a from a brain theory point of view, yep. it introduced more fiber. Mm. I mean, I think that's one of the major criticisms of keto is not enough fiber in the yep. diet, right? But I mean, leafy greens and things like mm. that as well too. But seriously, if you're looking at doing a ketogenic diet, and Steve, we're gonna go through it, yeah. have a look at Dave Palumbo. You can search yep. him up online, have a look at his diet tips. Yeah. Uh, very smart guy, old school bodybuilder. Yep. Um, yeah. The essence of a ketogenic diet is it's fairly high in fat, mm-hmm. moderate protein, yep. But low in carbohydrates. Yeah. And I'll read this, I'll read a conclusion from a meta analysis uh, published in Obesity, the paper. It's called Obesity. Mm-hmm. So I don't write letters about me picking on the name of it. It's a conclusion from a calories in, calories out perspective, restricting calories on a low carbohydrate diet produced a greater weight loss for the full duration of the trials and at the time of greatest weight loss compared to a low fat diet. Yeah. So if you're going to cut calories, don't go on a low fat diet. Cut your calories from 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 carbs, not from fats. Yeah. So so uh, there's so many studies here. Uh, low carbohydrate diet, the, the ketogenic diet is more effective for weight loss. Uh, European guidelines. This is an interesting study. Uh, the ketogenic diet can be recommended as an effective dietary treatment for individuals with obesity after considering for potentially contraindications and keeping in mind that they need to be monitored. And this is from the European guidelines. So it, the, the ketogenic diet had to score number two based on, you know, all this. And it, it, it just works. I mean, it, yes, you can spin it off to Atkins, that's good. Or you can take it to another direction, which is uh, number one, which I'll talk about in a second, which is a little bit of a spin on the ketogenic diet. Well, I'm very interested. Well, and look, and as I said as well too, I like like ketogenic, yep. I think it's definitely good for feeling full. Yep. Um, you know, but as I said, I think I sort of spun mine into more of a an Atkins style diet, where okay. my my protein content I think increased and my fat slightly decreased yep. because um, uh, e- eating. Um, you know, the majority of your carbohydrates as fats is actually quite difficult. Mm. The whole idea behind it is that if your protein is too high, you, then your body will, um, you gl- through glyconeogenesis, yep. actually break down your protein to become a source of fuel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you don't want that competing with the fat. You want the body just utilizing fat for fuel and giving your body just enough protein to repair muscle tissue and, and, and vital organs and, you know, all the rest of it. I, I got a criticism once, uh, a letter saying, but what if what if you, you do do what I do and train for an hour and a half each day, twice a day? And, and I went, well, you're probably not going to be overweight then. Okay, so this is the ketogenic diet is not for someone who's exercising for three hours. Uh, this guy was having a go saying about the ketogenic diet. It's like, man, this is for the average, you know, guy Punter. who may walk for 30 minutes, mm. you know, twice a week. Yeah. May. Yeah. So you don't need the protein levels to be high. And that's why they're moderate on a ketogenic diet. Mind you, I mean, Dave Palumbo, serious bodybuilder, trained yeah. and trained on the diet yeah. uh, and, and loved it. And I know other bodybuilders were. I think we did a podcast over in um, actually... It was this North Lake? Remember North Lake when we Tahoe. did the um, t- Lake Tahoe, and we had the guy from uh, you know the kinetic um, diet on the podcast? He loved it. Yeah. And again, this is the thing as well too. This is our top five. Yeah. But you might find your jam at number four, or it might be number five, or it might not even be on this list. But yeah. we're just giving the, the the basic overview. But some people love the keto. It works for them. Yeah. Their body responds to it. They feel mm. good on it. Yep. Mate, use what works. Use what you know? works. I mean, we could rate the hottest models on the planet. You know, come. Becca would be number one, wouldn't she? Well, not for me. Oh yeah. She she she'd be number two. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you like potatoes, and I like potatoes. What is a potato? <laughs> right? I don't know what a potato is. But everybody's different, Steve. Yeah. Our guts different. Yep. Our likes are different. The way that we respond, our polymorphisms mm. are different. 
you know, our circumstances and situations are yep. different. The one size fits all. This is the best year. You must do it. Yep. No. So it's the same thing with this. Yeah, so for the for the keto hard fans out yep. there, absolutely. Yep. It's just, I guess this is for people maybe that haven't done a diet before or have tried and have failed and we're sort of weighing up the pros and cons. So yeah, keto, I, I like it. As yeah. I said, I kind of slip probably more back into the Atkins. Yep. Um, but certainly I think keto hardcore for, for a, sort of a month to two months is a good place to start. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. great. And it's, a, it's, just and it's the cyclo, cyclical keto diet. So it can be, I'll, just yeah. say, I'll, I'll just say it was the cyclical one. The, the Atkins diet has the four phases that that's cyclical in a way, and you end up yep. on a maintenance phase, which mm-hmm. is just basically as many just cut out grains, yep. and sugar, yep. and everything else is fair game. Yep. So, so it's very interesting because the Atkins diet, uh, sorry, the ketogenic diet is typically lower in carbohydrates as well. That, mm-hmm. That's how they they, they match because your, your satiety is up, so you don't feel like eating as much, yep. and you're not eating as much protein, yep. and you're eating loads more fat, which mm. tends to you know. But also with with protein, we have a, and this is creeping into number one here, but protein actually has. As, as also a TEF effect. Does everyone know what TEF is? Yeah. Thermic effect of food? Yeah. It's yeah. 20% more calories burnt from eating protein. Correct. And it's really, really important that people understand this because, mm. um, and again, Steve, I'm looking forward to number one. I'm sure yeah. we've sort of talked about it a lot before, right? Have. But but I think it can't be underestimated. And this is where, if it fits your macros, is wrong. Yeah. Because if, they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't um, calculate that. It, it's don't. the same thing with, um, with insulin. Mm. It's the same thing with hormone-altering foods. It's the same thing with resistant starch. Mm-hmm. Not all food is actually the sum of its macros. And if you're smart and you make it fit your macros, then you can actually get a multiplying effect. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm not saying that if it fit your macros guys are wrong. I just think they've probably failed to consider some of the other parts of the calculation. They've right? failed to consider the average human six, Joe six pack out there or non six pack. Yeah, that's because, right. Joe non six pack. Because they go, oh, if fit macro. The first thing the the the, the patients because I've seen thousands of them. Uh, the first thing is what's a macro. You know, is that some kind of lens you put on a camera? Yeah, they, they don't know what a macronutrient is. So you've got to, you know, in the online world where everyone's debating this, in, in the real world, people don't, don't know, you know, oh, how, how, how do I calculate what, what's a calorie? Is it, you know, and it's sure. like they have, no, and they have no idea. Well, there's barriers to entries and there's yeah. level of, if you like, intelligence. Now, for, for the If It Fit Your Macros, the personal trainers who are actually working with their clients to educate them and set up plans yep. and a coach yep. like Jared. Yep. Completely different. Yep. Because you've got the support. They can make tweaks to your diet, what works yeah. for you, what doesn't. That is the best. That is yeah. the highest level that you can obviously go for. But for people who are doing it themselves, where their level of understanding and or ability might not be there, or firstly, will. go get a coach. If, yeah. if not, yeah, or will, yeah. which is a big one. Yeah, but this one. is your why. And this is if you're listening to this as well too and you're like, oh, I've tried this and it didn't work, tried that. A lot of trainers will say, trust the plan and work the plan. You yeah. have to stick with it. It's not like you can go to the gym and become Arnold Schwarzenegger next week. That's mm. not how it works. Exactly. Right? It's the same thing with losing weight. Yeah. You can't expect to diet for a week and go, oh, where's my six pack? Exactly. You know? and, and I've got people in my family and friend circle, I won't mention any names, that, that lose weight by uh, injections, uh, GLP-1 injections, which is, sorry, GLP-1. Tell is, me more about these injections. Well, the, the, all these injections, are, they're given to diabetics usually because they slow down gastric emptying and they cause you to feel nauseous in the stomach. Oh. Yeah. This is like the pills that I saw that you can get online that are full of um, like bacteria that actually give you gastroenteritis yeah. Yeah. and it goes miracle weight loss drug. Yep. It's like... Well, I might as well go and stick my finger into the trough down at the local urinal, and, and it, that's just there as effective, is, and I don't have to pay for anything. Yeah, there, there, well, there I were, pay for it, but not, there, not in the way you think, right? <laughs> there were capsules. Go, go get the bowl and just scoop the finger around the inside of the bowl, and you, not, instant get, weight loss, Steve. It's it worse than that. What? You know, there, there was capsules that had tapeworms in them, you know, tapeworm eggs. For weight yeah, loss. You know I that? did hear that. So I mean, no, don't worry. People do all sorts of daft things. Like, obviously, it's not part of this podcast, but but we should could do a podcast you on will, the daft ways yeah. to lose weight, yeah. and it'll go for three days. Yeah, because it's like the things that people even nowadays there's approved medications out there like these injections that make you feel slick and sl- slow down your gastric emptying, sick. so you lose weight. Wow. Yeah, you get you, you feel sick and you get gastric ulcering and all, that, but you lose weight. We should just go straight to amputations. Well, but, you, know, you just think how much weight you could lose if you cut off both both of your arms and your legs. Exactly. You know, now we're talking serious yeah. stuff. Yeah, right? now, I've, I've, gee, you're looking great. Yeah, I've lost yeah. 40 kilos. How would you do that? I just chopped off my arms and legs. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got to remember that there's people that are desperate. 
and and they do all these. So that that's why I put the shakes as an honourable mention. Didn't make top five, but because if you're going to go start and taking these weird drugs like amphetamines, people take amphetamines. Yeah, 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 That's a common one. Germine. Yep. German. Yep. Yeah. And and that of course you know it speeds up your norepinephrine and serotonin. Yeah, yeah. It gets in your brain, so you, your appetite's reduced, and it gives you obviously high sleep metabolism. But the main mechanism is the neurochemistry in the brain mm. that stops you feeling full. It feels like you're going for a jog all the time. And you're not. You're not. You know, typically when you're out running on the streets like I was this morning in the hills, I wasn't feeling like food. You're not craving feeling, it. Yeah. No, I was feeling like dying of heat stroke. Is what I was. Feeling. Oh really? <laughs> it was hot. Was that hot this morning? Really? I was pretty warm. Well, for you know, for me, I'm for an old man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, you got to take those cardies off, Steve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you take my cardie off back? I'm going for a run. Or you the Zimmer frame. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. That, that's yeah, I'd run you over if I saw you on the street. Doing that's it. it. So, I mean, I this, is, really. this, is, this is why, you know, we, we could do a daft way to lose weight. And, and no, those injections. Don't, Steve. Seriously, because oh. people would do it. And this is the funny thing. People are crazy to lose weight and they want to lose it tomorrow. I've got a wedding in two weeks. Yeah. Can I, how do I lose 40 kilos? Exactly, exactly. Um, and, yeah, and this is what I used to get in clinic. Yeah. Used get, to drive my nap. Make nuts. a time machine? How do yeah. I do that? <laughs> well, I, I, I had a lady who took up smoking on purpose to lose weight. Oh, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's oh, great. it worked out. Yeah, sure. She'd come back and see me. And, and she goes, now, now, you know, what, what can I do to get off the cigarettes now? I've lost some weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great patient. You know. The funny thing is the people who naturally were smoking yeah. from a young age who give up cigarettes oftentimes yeah. put on weight because they don't want to do something with their hand, right? Yeah. And you're, smoking does curb appetite. It does, yeah. Um, it'll just give you cancer. That's right. I mean, it's permanent weight loss. Every, you get cachexia with cancer and you lose weight dramatically. If you <laughs> the radiation therapy. Exactly. You, know, you, you take chemo and it destroys your gut so you don't feel hungry. And you're throwing up all the time. I mean, you know, it goes down a rabbit hole of, you know, obviously we're, we're drunk. We wouldn't recommend any of that, blah, blah, blah. No. Let's be safe. But, but I mean, you remember one of my favourite pod- podcasts I did with podcasts. A podcast. You, podcast. Well, you're fishing. You're doing a fishing, yeah, but, fishing show. Leader. Welcome to my fishing podcast. <laughs> yeah. The old podcast that we did ages ago yeah. where we talked about all the things that cheated our way to weight. Remember we did that one? Yeah. And it was like. Nothing to do with diet or no, something. No, I don't. It was just cheating. Yeah. And we talked about, you know, uncoupling proteins. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about all the drugs. It just yeah, cheats. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that one. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's hilarious. Like that serious drug that they use for, uh, that they used to oh, apply, yeah. apply to wood that two, killed people. 2 4 dial or something. Yeah, that's it. Uncoupling protein. And that, it just, yeah, you just cook from the inside, yeah. right? Bodybuilders have used it. Um, I've, I've known people that have used it. Oh yeah. Uh, apparently, it stains the skin really bad as well too, like like really really bad. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, it works. At low dose, it works. You know, one in four chance you'll die. Uh, yeah. It's kind of worth it. Well, no, no, I'm kidding. It's not. But like that's what people would say. But, but people, how much? Yeah, but how much weight will I? Lose? Yeah, you got to remember, people, even you know, my close friends and family have had gastric sleeves, mm. major abdominal. Yeah, I had a friend. I had weight. a friend who did it. Who, yeah. who had it done? Mm-hmm. I've got relatives and friends who have done that. Mm. I've got a it's friend dramatic, who, eh? who, who took amphetamines for three months mm-hmm. to lose weight and did. Mm. So, so you know, there, there's all these things that people do. So, so we're worried about having a, a, a milkshake, you know, but, and then there's this yeah. other, and so it's what, that's why I gave it a mention because I, I just to keep them out of the, yeah. the, the surgeries. So, so Steve, keto number two. Yeah. Good one. Have a look at it. Good. If you're considering it, it doesn't work for everyone. As I said, my wife cannot make it work. She just feels terrible. Can't get past the brain yep. fog. Yeah. You know, but again, everything's got its pros and cons. Yep. So what's number one? Number one uh, that that is you know, you're not gonna be surprised, is the simple low carbohydrate diet. No. Just that. You can eat the protein. Yep. You know, it's not a keto. Yep. You don't have to have a high fat. You can have high or low fat or whatever you want. Yep. But just keep off the flour and sugar. Yeah. And I'll just, simple as that, keep yep. off the grains and sugar. Yeah. Now, the reason why that, that ticked it is because there's research showing that it very well works. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's simple. Yep. It, uh, it's compliance. You, you don't have to count calories. You don't have to weigh things if it fits your macro this or what time of day or anything like that. Um, it, it's good. You can adapt it to be vegan. Um, it, if you've got religions like you, you don't eat pork or something, you don't have to eat pork. Mm-hmm. There's none of these sort of things. Yep. The cost can be up to you as well. Yep. So it, it ticks all the boxes. It is good. And, and it's a good one because it simply gets the message across to the person who is really trying to lose weight and it gives them great flexibility. Okay. You know, and you just say, you just want to cut out two things, sugar and grains. Yep. And that's, and the, yeah, that now, now they can go yeah, there now. for 
they, they, they can eat three bananas a day, which may become too sugar, but the typical thing... Well, if you eat more green banana as well too, you've got more starch. starch yeah. uh, is it resistant starch? It is resistant starch, yeah. Which, which is really good for you. I mean, it's funny. like they, if, you, if, if you get gastro, yeah. go and eat green, but like as green as you can get. It's yeah. one of the things that they actually use in, in, in those third world countries to actually help, um, you know, sort of with the side effects. But, but um, resistant starch, green bananas are actually pretty good. And the greener they are, the less sugar that they've got. Yes. Uh, and I'm not saying going out and eat one of those, you know, we've all had the banana where you have it and it tastes sort of waxy and yeah. sort of no flavour and just mm. like that's disgusting. But the the less ripe they are, mm. the less sugar that they've got in them. Yeah. So and, and, and it's a bit of a, like, it's not a tricky diet. There's no special things you can adapt it to whatever you want, you know, and, and it will lose weight. It's quite safe if you have lots of green vegetables. Yeah. You know, there's well, I mean, no... There's lots of health ticks there, Steve. Th- there's lots of health ticks. So, but so, so... Okay, can we talk about... Okay, that, that, that's cool. So so reducing refined sugars? Yep, cutting out refined cutting out sugars and, 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 and reducing out carbs. Flour. Yep. And that's... that's the, and those, I say cutting ones, out yeah. because you got to remember, you know, the, the fruits are about 15, 20% carbohydrate if you eat a high sugar one like mango. Sure. But grains are about 70 to 75% sugar. So, so things like apple, I mean, they're not from the devil. I mean, this no. is funny because we used to have this all the time, right? Mm. Like things like blueberries, the antioxidants mm. and, the, and the benefit that they get far outweighs any of the sugars that no you get. No need to weigh it. No need to S- count it. So, Steve, the ultimate diet. Yeah, let's do it. All right, the ultimate one. Putting everything together, yeah. right? So what about, and can you mention intermittent fasting? Because I know that's yeah. really popular. Um, benefits? The benefits of fasting is you, you firstly eat less calories, great for your gut. Yeah. And it, it, it also gives you some discipline. Yeah. Because <laughs> if let, let's just do a simple fast of 16 hours at night. Right. Okay. So you're eating dinner at, and we'll eat dinner early. We'll eat dinner at five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. It's very in the early. Well, let's say six o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Let's six o'clock. All right. All right. So 12 that. hours from that is 6 a.m. Yep. And then you've got another four hours after that. So 10. 10 o'clock. That's easy. I can it, do that. It can be done. Yeah. Now, do you, know, uh, do you know what I reckon is one of the worst things for weight gain? What? Little snacks after dinner. Yeah. You know, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I haven't had a snack in 25 That's minutes. That's a funny right? video. It is. It's biscuit. We've got that up on our, on That's our reels. That's so cute. But yeah. Um, but yes, snacking, mm. especially snacking after dinner, especially snacking with, with the high sugar treats. Yes. You're not a dog. You don't need treats. <laughs> and, and um, but yeah, I think I think in terms of cutting that out. Yeah. I mean, but it, it's it's a double. It's a, it's actually a double cut. It's it's not just eliminating that so that yeah. you're not getting the bad. Mm. But the good is is that you're allowing um, the 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 intermittent fasting to help with um, your metabolism, repairing broken DNA strands. Yeah. Um, you're upregulating your hormones uh, against leptin and yep. so, so see you, you can explain you it can way make, better than you, I can. your triglycerides drop because you're burning yes. the fat so your leptin works yep. better so your appetite's better so you uh, start tapping into more of your fat correct. reserves yep. um you you your your, your um constant uh, reinforcement and insulin levels drop so you become less hungry yep absolutely um, so, so you actually find that you do reduce overall caloric uh, calorific intake. Absolutely. Um, so all these things are really, really positive. So yep. have a. I recommend with that evening meal mm-hmm. is get plenty of protein, get yep. some good fats in there. Yeah. And I would highly recommend getting some good fiber into there as well too. But if you're having good protein, fats, and fiber, mm. uh, you, you're laughing. Well, also you got to remember that that the, the let's let's talk to the people out there that don't exercise. And most people who listen to this podcast probably exercise. They may be on the treadmill now, but for. You know, a third of the population. Maybe they on don't. exercise bikes, do. Yeah. Now, let's say you, you don't do exercise, right? Um, and and the only activity you get, and I'll call that activity, is your daily activity through work. Mm-hmm. So you might be a carpenter, or you might be an office worker, or whatever it is. But you, you, that's where your activity cut lies. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you're eating a big meal at night, mm-hmm. you know, you just have a little sandwich for lunch or a salad for lunch. Ninety percent, eighty percent of your calories are going to come from your evening meal, breakfast, and all that snacks you talk about. Mm. Now, imagine having them all around. Like, like you come home from work, you have your nice big cooked dinner. That's great. Then you might have your nice sort of snack after dinner, and then you go to sleep. Yeah. Then you wake up. First thing you do, eat breakfast yeah. before you go to work. A big Break breakfast fast, of yep. cereal or whatever it is. So in that short amount of time, you had about 2,000 calories mm-hmm. and you've done zero physical activity. You may not have even left the house. Mm-hmm. It just does not make sense. Yeah. And I know people who do that. Mm-hmm. I know people say, oh, I get enough activity with my job. Um, 
No, you're having 2,000 calories and doing bugger all in that specific time period. And again, I know this is not the subject of this podcast, yeah. but the fast cardio and the afterburn effect as well too, especially if oh, you can incredible. upregulate fats by getting the oral cavity with fat into the into the mouth, which yep. we speak about, Steve, is a great yep. way to go as well too. And you can kind of piece these things together. But in summary, a high-protein, mm. relatively low-carbohydrate, very low-sugar diet, yes, yes. incorporate healthy fats. Yep. Um, maybe look at in, uh, you know a, a, a um, intermittent fasting where last meal is at say at six and then the first meal is at ten. Yep. Um, incorporating things like nuts, uh, protein shakes are fine. I mean, again, absolutely. we make them, Steve. But yeah. I mean, like absolutely uh, uh, to get oh, there because then by upping the amount of protein, you're getting yeah. the TEF effect, which is the thermic effect of food, specifically the protein. Yeah. So up your protein, get healthy fats. Reduce your sugars, mm -hmm. um, lower the amount of carbohydrates that you're getting. Mm -hmm. If you are training, try and look at putting in your carbohydrates post workout as well That's too, good, so that yeah. there's less. So your body will create create um, insulin um, after having carbohydrates specifically. Yeah, if you time yeah. that with protein, that will help to obviously refuel the glycogen in the muscles. Mm -hmm. So there's less chance of that becoming stored as body fat. Yeah. Um, what else? Eat, eat lots of green vegetables. Mate. Lots of greens. Yeah, lots with, of fiber. With, with your meals, try and e eat plant foods Yeah. Um, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So for breakfast, let's say you're having an omelet. Get some capsicum in there. Spinach, maybe. Spinach, yeah. anything that's that's fruity. If you're having a smoothie, berries or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So try and get something out of there, so something like that. For lunch, salads, yeah. loads of it. Yeah. Big bowl. You yeah. can have as much as you want. It's right. low carbohydrate. Yeah, yeah. You, you and know. then maybe put in some salmon or some yep. tuna or yep. some 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 meats. Yep. Um, you know, eggs even. Eggs. Uh, you know, great cheese just, just, if you yeah. want. Maybe some some slivered almonds, Steve, slivered or something. Almonds. I don't know. Slivered in sounds so, very So fun. a big bowl of salad. So you're getting all the plant food there. Yeah. It's filling your body up. It's good for you and all that. And, and not any of that as well too, Steve. Then you're getting yeah. diversity of salads. You know, put your capsicums and and put your put your your, your cucumbers and yep. you know put put a variety of, of food in there. Your and then you look at your herbs and spices yep. and other things that you can get in there to look after your gut. Yep. By lower sugar as well too, you're not feeding the firmicutes yep. and you're helping to keep them under control and just your firmicutes make you fat and ugly. Yep. You want to get more of your bacteria do doities and yep. like we don't get enough omega-3s into our diet, we're getting mm -hmm. too much omega-6. Mm -hmm. uh, by having fish and other things like that, that can obviously help. Nuts and seeds, I think have got a, a variety yeah, of... Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they're great, but walnuts are really high in omega-3s. Omega-3s. So, but same thing with regards to your um, uh, your um, your bacteria doities and all the yeah. rest of it. If, if you can if you can concentrate on on foods that are lower in sugars, you're gonna restore the balance mm. back to where it should be. Yeah. And all these little things, I think, help. So, Steve, I think we got it. We have, and and this is the answer to that question that you correctly pointed out before, um, where they compared a, in 2021, they compared a low carbohydrate diet or exercise. Yep. Yes. Yes. The low carbohydrate diet was better. Yes. Now, yeah. isn't that amazing? So why not do both? Well, you do, and I'm going to say that you do both. Yeah. But I mean, it was just an. It just shows study. the importance of food. Yeah. Because I mean, you can be exercising, but if you're yep. not taking care of the diet, you're basically, yep. you know, throwing a, a bucket of water into a raging inferno, right? Abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve, you've looked so at that from somewhere. So compared with exercise, low carb diet is more efficient for weight loss and glucose homeostasis than people with obesity. There you go. It's pretty. So, so that's why I love this diet. It even beat exercise. Yeah. Not that you should not, not exercise. Not do exercise. Yeah, yeah. Do that as well. Exactly. But so, it's the foundation of all fitness, health, and wellness. Yep. I think this Hippocrates guy might have known something, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And it's not about calories. Remember, they no. compete against low calorie diet, yep. they beat it. And and that's absolutely right, Steve. And mm. I think if, if if you don't become overly focused on calories, and this is again, I think the Atkins could work for some people yep, as well, too. Very much. Up the up the dense nutrients with that and get rid of the, the, the low or empty calories as you say. Sugar is from the devil. Yep. Get lots of, of, of leafy greens, lots of high quality meats. Uh, lots of nuts and seeds. Um, try the intermittent fasting. Yep. Uh, even and if you are doing that, I highly recommend. I know it's not this podcast, but go for a walk or, or do your high interval um, sprint training first thing in the morning. Absolutely. Um, even with a little bit of oil in the mouth. Yep. I know that sounds funny, but there's things that yep. you can do that actually upregulate the body's tapping into using fat for uh, acetylcarnitine is amazing as well mm -hmm. too. But um, 
I think that could be a really, really good foundation, Steve. And, of course, for the guys that are at the higher end, you guys are building muscle, yeah. you're working on reducing fat, you've got your calories dialed in, mm. that makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, this is not really for the higher That's end, not for those you know, guys, no. They like know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. So we, we, I sort of eliminated them out of this equation because it's for the 99% of us mortals. Yep. You know, they, they're, they're the food of the gods. Yep. Those guys. So, um, you know, uh, actually that was a, the title of a book by Henry Osiki. I remember Henry yeah, Osiki. Food for the Gods. Yeah. I remember wrote a book with him. Yeah. Yeah, on cardiovascular right? disease. Yeah, he was, he was a bit of a legend, old Henry. Beck downstairs, not my Beck, Beck downstairs, got a copy of my book. So, yes, yeah, so that, that's an interesting book that I wrote with Henry, a great one on cardiovascular disease. And the when did you write that, Steve? When? Yeah. Uh, oh, Back in eight. the 90s? <laughs> no, not 2008. No, oh, I meant the 1890s. Yeah, 1890s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. That, that was with the book I, with, with Edison I wrote, you know, yeah. about locals. <laughs> uh, oh, good one, 19, what, was it, what was the most famous scientific year? 1904. Is that right? Albert Einstein came up with the general relativity. When, did, when was he working in the patent office? And when in 1904. And, and, and when did uh, the guy say, was it 1899, that said that effectively everything that has been invented will be invented? That's right. And everything yep. in physics is known. Yep. And then, then he comes out with general relativity. And Five general, years later. Yeah. And general relativity predicts the motion of the, 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 the stars and predicts the motion of mm -hmm. the planets. Yep. It yep. talks about space time and how it's what it, it describes. Space time what, continuum, of course, yep. because you can't have one without the other exactly yep. i mean there's you know if, if you go fast the time yep. gradient goes down oh it's if you go it's the fascinating light, steve i love it time stops yeah absolutely you can get up on a plane as well too and they yep. can actually have with the the clocks i think they've got a couple in the world and yep. depending atomic on elevation clocks. and height the atomic clocks that's yep. exactly right the less gravity you go in space yep you go at, 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 at light years of a million miles an hour. I think, you know, I forget the aging process changes and you can have identical people. They come back to Earth, they would still yep. look, you know, 33 where they'd be, you know. It's really weird yeah. and, it's, and it's fascinating. You age more with less gravity. That's it. So if you live on top of a, a skyscraper, mm -hmm. you'll age a fraction of a second faster than people on Earth. Oh. Because less gravity. Yeah, right. And gravity is, is related to time because it's of, of um, the warping of space time. Yeah. They call it space time because it's mm. space and time. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's lovely. 1904. It's has nothing to do with weight loss. No. Nah. That's interesting. <laughs> Stop that. Yeah, a bit off topic there. Yeah. We should wrap this up. We should. Thank you, Steve. I uh, loved it. This, uh, was, this was tough. Good. Yeah. We, I mean, a, a, lot, a lot of information to take in there. Look, no. please, if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, mm. anything at all, shoot us a, an email. You can get, get, on, uh, get onto our social media pages yep. and, and ping us. We'd love to hear from you. We, we'd, love we, to. we'd love to look at topics. We'd love to look at questions, any of that sort of stuff. Yeah, tell me um, where it went wrong because, as I said, it's a judgment call. It's yeah, like, well, and again, it, this is this is absolutely not an ironclad five no. to one, and you have to. This is why one is the absolute best, yeah. and what have you. Take from it what works for you, because as you say, at the end of the day, it's whatever you do and whatever plan you work. That's the one that's going to work for you. Exactly. Yeah. My my, my diet is number five. There you go. That's how that's how much I ranked. And, and I think I think mine's kind of number four. Yeah. But I might actually try number one or the ultimate diet, Steve, that you've just ultimate put forward diet. with the intermittent fasting and yep. the fasted cardio first thing in the morning. I, and I do that. I do fasting and I do fasting exercise every morning. And I do, uh, you know, I don't, don't, I try and delay my eating. I try and eat early and then late as I can. So yeah, so you eat at like six, not past six, seven o'clock Not past six o'clock. Yeah, and really then is. and then you don't eat until about 10 o'clock? Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's about uh, seven o'clock. <laughs> you know, so seven o'clock in the morning? No, I do a 14 hour fast. Oh, yeah, good. But, you, but you're up at what time, Steve? Uh, 4.30. Yeah. 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 Got to get the exercise in. Yeah, that's it. People say, I used to say, oh, I start work at nine, I've got no time to exercise in the morning. I don't know how many patients of mine said that. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got hours, you know, to do it. Just go to bed earlier. Yeah. Stop watching YouTube. <laughs> oh, that, and you got to remember, most of the time after nine o'clock is, is, is screen time, isn't it? Let's yeah, it's most. Yeah, and and that can be sacrificed a little bit for that thirty minutes, just for the thirty minute run. In the well, morning. if you if you're going to bed at eleven, yeah, go to bed at ten, get up an hour earlier, even if you just go for a twenty minute power walk. Yep. I mean, anything's better yep. than nothing. And and once you get into it, and once you start seeing results, that becomes addictive. The most so, dangerous yeah. exercise, none at all. That's it. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. We'll be back more next week. I think you're on holidays, yes. so bugger, I've got a special. <laughs> I've got a special guest coming. <laughs> I've got a trip up north with Mick. You're going to call that a holiday? Bloody oath, you <laughs> slacker! <laughs> you're going to visit some visit some retailers of ours and say hello. Yep. I can't wait. Right. It's be great fun. Good on you, Steve. All right, we'll see you next week, guys. Well, Mate, no, you won't. I will. Yeah. All right. Out of here. Okay. See you guys. Bye.